as a car guy, what could be better than spending a lot of your money on an old car and making a bad financial decision? Yes, of course. Helping your friend spend a lot of their money and make a bad financial decision. Today's video isn't technically about me, but me and my friend Tyler are gonna be flying out to Colorado to pick up a very special, maybe I'm selling it up too much. We're gonna go out to Colorado, pick up a car, and attempt to drive it back, which for a normal car isn't really a big ask, but on the car that you're about to see, it could end up being quite interesting could end up being an adventure. Now it is 6.15 in the morning, which is approximately four hours before I prefer to wake up. We're gonna start off by getting me a nice cup of gym and then we're gonna go meet Tyler and drive off to the airport. So it's gonna be another vlog style video. weird to see the sky at this level of light in the morning. What I'm trying to say is I am never up this early. <laughs> I think waking up anytime before 7.30 is a waste. But we're going to buy a car today, which is interesting and fun and it'll be an adventure. Hopefully uh, not as much of an adventure as it could pan out to be if the car breaks down on the way, but it's... Tyler's spending a lot of money on it, so it should be fine. It also has a lot of service history and things like that, which is usually a good sign, so. Is my coffee shop even open? What? 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 It's not open yet? <laughs> 6 30. I'm up so early that my coffee shop isn't even open yet. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? I'm gonna die. I'm not gonna survive. That actually really sucks. <laughs> Denver. Here's the uh, here's Happy Tyler at the moment. In about eight hours, that smile could be 
wiped off his face. More in the next and mine. Or <laughs> the next 20 minutes. So we're about to see what car it is. And knowing my channel, it's a road trip video. Every road trip video that I've done has involved a car from this brand. So there's your clue. Let's go see it. So he's gonna pick us up here at the airport and hopefully Tyler buys the car. Otherwise we're flying back home and it'll be, the whole video will be deleted and you won't be any the wiser. Strike a deal. Yeah. I supervised another Land Rover purchase. Let's hope this one doesn't go as badly as uh, another one that we're thinking of. It's kind of a nice neighborhood, actually. Hmm. I wonder if that one's for sale. Now we get to drive it back to Salt Lake from Denver, so this is my coffin for the next eight hours. So in terms of issues, air suspension that leaks, because what good air suspension doesn't leak? The tires are kind of dead, but eh, I think we'll survive. Cut to tumbling off the freeway into a ditch where we meet our demise when I'm proven wrong about saying the tires are fine. While they do the paperwork, I get to admire the Sonore Gray or whatever, whatever the hell this color's name is. L322 Range Rover. Those things look really, really gorgeous when they're working. I think the look is a little bit spoiled when it's on blocks in the junkyard, which is where they usually end up, but that one looks pretty good. Gotta get a CarMax warranty on that thing in order to make it worth it. <laughs> That's what I like about the Discovery is that when it comes to Land Rover's lineup, the Discoveries are usually the ones that have the least amount of headache in terms of reliability and maintenance, as opposed to, you know, that. But it still has this badge right here, which means that it's never gonna be Land Cruiser reliability or anything, but you know. All right, I don't wanna say that's good. Mm -hmm. They got the coolant pipes done, which was the important, the biggie on top of the uh, chain. Oh, I didn't notice your, uh, top of your door panels like melted. They're What's all that about? That's apparently a common thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, haven't heard, I haven't heard of that. That's, that must well, be Well, everyone keeps their... That must be a new age Land Rover thing. <laughs> so now we're off to buy tires or? Um, the tire guy's near the diagnostic tool guy. So we got some errands to make. Is that, <laughs> was that all right? Yeah, I'm fine with that. It's your trip, so well, you're I'm the just one riding who's, along You're the one who's you. stuck here, so. Yeah, well, I don't mind. All part of the fun, I guess. The fun is the tow trucks we meet along the way. Yeah, don't say that yet. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, iPod. I've got my iPod. Not that that helps you, but, you know. <laughs> uh, Land Rover in all caps. Land Rover. We <laughs> said, don't like this uh, yeah, shifter. It's kind of meh looking. Oh, for so what do you think the pairing code is? Um, no, we're still at his house. You want to go in and ask? <laughs> There's the title. Oh, I, I could just steal your car right now. Yeah, okay. well, wait a little while. <laughs> I might want you to do that. This squeak. Yeah. I think it's the CV. This, uh, this shift knob reminds me of what you'd see in like a Nissan Murano from 2007. The eight speeds get that, you know, that dial lever that Jaguar likes? Just oh it. yeah, that's, that's but apparently they fail randomly, and then you're just stuck, and they're back ordered. Naturally, it's got the best combination of nice interior on the inside, but still boxy and discovery-like on the outside, unlike the new one, which I think is a disgrace. Oh, there's my bag. I like the the three roofs, too, the centers. Oh yeah, three centers. What can go wrong? Boom.
probably just cost me $20 in gas. <laughs> Maybe. So the guy with the tires is willing to like put them on for you? Is that what he said? Yeah. That's kind of cool. So you know, the jack stands on her and then it just breaks through because it's made of rust. That would suck. I'll Actually, I think it's it aluminum. Looks, it looks pretty clean. Oh, no, not this one. It's an aluminum body, isn't it? I think so, because they went aluminum on the, on the next generation, and I think they saved like 800 or 900 pounds. <laughs> it was oh, yeah. something ridiculous. Is the 5 a... There's a Bronco Raptor. Um, is the 5 a mono, monocoque uh, unibody? unibody yeah. This is like unibody on frame because they couldn't make up their mind. Yeah, both. <laughs> it seems like a very Land Rover way to do it. It's a little bit more roomy back there than in Discovery 2. Enough that I can actually kind of move my legs. Still a little tight, but not too bad. Here, you want me to do you a favor? Yes, <laughs> But my black ice, man. Do you want it? get scissors somewhere. Actually, no. I found a weak point. Ha ha! How much did you pay for it? Nine. Nine thousand? Yeah, it's not too bad. Cheapest one around. It, like, Oof. runs. <laughs> Cheapest one by a lot that had chains done. Yeah, that's still a good deal. Slow down or vehicle will lower. <laughs> you threatening me, car, already? How'd you rate your, uh, infotainment there? Um, two. Two out of ten, <laughs> not very well. Then. It runs really smooth too. It's really quiet and idle, which is good. It's so smooth over bumps, I'm not used to. Yeah, I know. It's it's comfortable. So I think one problem with the Discovery Two, it shakes and it rocks really hard when you go over um, bumps or uneven road surface or whatever. I just Especially keep at slow speeds, you really get tossed around. Just keep pot hitting potholes that I think are going to be really big, and then it's like, oh, okay. I'm sitting in the passenger seat of a Discovery, and I'm wincing because I feel like, it, you know, I'm wincing for the same reason. It's actually not too bad. So we got two stops to make. Hopefully get tires, and we'll what see. was the I'm other thing? Torn if get I a want code to... reader? Yeah, uh, I'm still torn if I want to spend that much money on tires. I'm going to at least take the slight amount of stress off of going home with those front tires. Oh, being, I'm not worried like, about those totally getting home. I just mean, destroyed. like, long term. Yeah. Like, I'm sure those are going to get home just fine, but like I want to oh, go yeah. camping and stuff. And then also those 18s look really nice. All right, now I get to drive. Need to make sure you like all my cars in case I need to sell one at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Firm required suspension height. I think there's a review camera. Because now you can't see with those tires. <laughs> um, Where are we headed? Home? Do you want more details of it? Yeah, it's got good uh, throttle response and it accelerates pretty well. Just from driving it in a neighborhood. What are your impressions just for the purposes oh, of the video? Oh, sorry, I wasn't sure when you are like talking. Should be filming. No, I think it's pretty good so far. Uh, I have the feeling I'm gonna be fixing a few minor things, but overall, yeah. not bad. You said it uh, disguises your, disguises speed pretty well. Yeah, for truck. <laughs> it seems pretty good at speed, which is surprising. And again, it is really comfortable. All these materials and everything are really nice too. Yeah, this, now that, yeah, it's plastic, but I mean, it's 2010, so also there's a lot of plastic. The, uh, this isn't a top trim either, so. Definitely feels more alive than a Discovery 2 does. Yeah. And of course, the driving position is nice and high up. Yeah. yeah railroad track's not even, not that bad at all. It just kind of goes over, I think for nine grand, it's pretty good, but you'll have to see how the next couple months go <laughs> with it. It'll be alright. <laughs> and it'll be cool to see what this thing can do off-road. Especially with those new tires you got back there. It's got a nice turn signal chime too. I know, I was thinking that earlier. So. Deet, doot, deet, doot. I drove a Jeep Grand Wagoneer, new one. And it has the worst, most hideous turn signal chime ever. Oh, it's so awful. Yeah, it sounds good and it shifts good. Shifts well, I mean. <laughs> yeah goes through the gears really nicely. Feels leaps and bounds ahead of a Discovery 2 in terms of driving it and interior quality and space and comfort. Like in a Discovery 2, I'm just, the steering wheel's like all the way down here and my knees are pressed up against the dashboard and I have to kind of man spread to be comfortable even in the front of that thing. And in this, it's, you can actually sit like a human and feel comfortable. 
so that's an improvement. It still still feels like a Discovery, though. I feel like the Discovery 5 isn't going to feel anything like a Discovery on the inside, but this feels quite similar. You can tell you're sitting in a Discovery and that progress has been made over two generations in this thing because it's still got that same flat dashboard and the high driving position and all the sunroofs and the flat door panels and things like that that I recognize from a Discovery, but everything is just nicer and more modern feeling. I feel like a Discovery 5 would not have that same feel on the inside. It wouldn't feel much like a Discovery. It'd still feel nice, I bet. I mean, better, but probably nicer than this, to be honest. But yeah, it rolls so much in the turns, it's ridiculous. Well, one of the trucks probably also. Still. You don't buy one of these things to autocross. I don't see you autocrossing this, but it'd be funny if you did. Yeah, dude, this is for rallycross. Honestly, it's nice driving a car on the highway that is good on the highway. It's kind of a weird feeling. Not feeling the steering wheel shake in your hands. Who <laughs> <It> drinks it? <laughs> at 80 miles an hour, it's a little windy, but not too bad. Uh, what car isn't windy at 80 miles an hour, especially at big, upright, tall 4x4. Four four. It's a lot of wind resistance and drag, I imagine. But you're right about it, disguising your speed. It doesn't feel like I'm going 80. It feels like I'm going 50 or 60, to be honest. It's actually kind of impressive the way it does that. could get you in trouble, but the benefit of that is that it holds on the highway just really smooth quiet and nice. 80 miles an hour and I'm doing 2100 RPM. Whereas in any of my other car, any of my actual cars, it'd be like 35, 3600. <laughs> and it just soaks up bumps so well. It's, it's quite nice so you don't have to wince and be hit through your spine with some unrelenting shock when you go over a bump. It's just actually goes over the bumps really well. Either that or I just drive crappy cars with blown shocks or something too much. For 190,000 miles, too, this thing feels solid. Yeah, that's feels like it has 100,000 miles on it. Yeah, I think if it feels like that, they've generally been fairly well taken care of, otherwise it wouldn't be like that. Oh, yeah. I think it's going to make it home just fine. It's just, yeah, nothing wood. <laughs> that's why I put it there, I think. I think that's like the designated spot. I think this 2010 LR4 is pretty good. A couple impressions from driving it and riding passenger in it. My own experience with a car of this type is with a Discovery 2, which I've already mentioned like 30,000 times in this video, but it's a useful thing to compare it against. In seven years, they really improved a lot, especially on interior quality, refinement, power, Maybe not styling. I'm not a fan of the way the back end of the car looks. It makes up for that with very nice interior with great materials, wood, leather dashboard, leather steering wheel. It's got a heated...
So it's an easy improvement over the Discovery 2 after seven years that separate this and the Discovery 2 that I have experience with, my dad's. And you can tell because it's got a very nice interior with nice leather dashboard, leather steering wheel with heat. $9,000 that Tyler paid for this thing at 190,000 miles. I think it's a pretty good thing. And you may be screaming timing chain issues, but the previous owner actually spent something like $8,800 on getting the timing chain issue resolved in this car. So there's not really that much to worry about other than the front tires, which are completely dead, the air springs, which are leaking, especially at full off-road height, which is a little weird, and the check engine light turned on like an hour ago. It wouldn't be a Land Rover without a check engine light. So it's nice to know that the check engine light works. How do you feel about your purchase? I'm feeling pretty good about it. And we got most of the way home with only the two error lights. So uh, I think that's pretty good. He's ready to spend some money. <laughs> I'm not, but I won't have a choice. Already 10 grand invested into this thing with those tires in the back. How do you feel? <laughs> um, yeah, so far so good. <laughs> Handsome, nice looking SUV. We're not even home yet, but we thought this was a cool spot to film in a little bit and get some cutaway shots. So we're just gonna continue on home. This is the end of the video, but if it's not, we'll see you in a second.